Thank you, Marco, and thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, my name is Antonio Casilli, and I will be uh, discussing digital labor. I am actually the token digital labor guy for these. Uh, uh, Sorry. Yes, I know. Yeah, cheers. I stick it to my beard. And uh, so the token digital labor guy is the guy, usually it's a middle-aged white man who comes up here uh, every time and uh, basically tells you that everything you are doing uh, while you are online is, uh, can be described as a form of labor because every click uh, we uh, push on a button, every word we publish, every app we download, can actually produce value for digital platforms. And this is probably uh, nothing, I mean, nothing new for a, a lot of you, but it is important to uh, tell it again, probably after all the presentations of today, to sum up uh, what we said, and also uh, to see how this articulates uh, with uh, digital platforms. How does this have to do with uh, collaborative economy? Well. It has to do, as far as uh, a lot of, at least the corporate manifestation of collaborative uh, economy, uh, rely on digital platforms. And platforms rely heavily on digital labor, which is the implicit labor of uh, any one of us, any user, any member of the platform. Uh, again, every content we publish, every data we uh, provide, or even some metadata that can be extracted from what we do online, can become digital labor, can become the implicit labor. And uh, um, again, uh, while we describe platforms, digital platforms in particular, we have to ask ourselves, what do platforms do? Well, they act as algorithmic intermediaries between uh, different social actors. Sometimes they are uh, consumers and producers, sometimes they are suppliers and demanders, and you know, they act as a uh, coordinating mechanism between these different actors. And this is nothing new. Again, there are a number of other uh, value producing mechanisms that rely on this kind of balance between capital and labor, for instance. And our question should be, in this case, when we deal with digital platforms, what about labor? Where is labor? If we look, and many of the speakers that uh, have come before me have already pointed this out, if we look at the former, uh, formal labor, meaning the ones who are actually formally employed by the digital platforms, the number of those is constantly shrinking. The number of people who are formally employed on the payroll is shrinking. And where is labor? Well, it's been crowded out. It's been pushed to the outside of the platform. Pushed to the outside means that basically we are dealing with uh, a number of persons, an increasing number of persons, who are working with the platform from the outside. And this kind of uh, implicit labor determines a shift uh, away from the uh, work that we've been studying for, uh, well, almost a century now, or even more. Actually, we have to relinquish the idea that work is only the thing that is uh, basically uh, workplace-based, wage-based, and, of course, payroll-based. A number of those who work with platforms today are not paid, are not paid at all, actually. And this is something that goes even further uh, uh, if we consider, for instance, the, uh, well, crowdsourcing of the past. Well, crowdsourcing have been, uh, uh, we've been here for a number of years now, and basically it was something more uh, based on specialized and very skilled uh, laborers. In some cases, it was something like, uh, I have a challenge and uh, I will look for the best person who can actually react to this challenge. Uh, and only one probably gets paid. But with digital labor, well, almost virtually nobody gets paid. Consider content producing, uh, content production, sorry. Um, consider uh, audiovisual platforms like YouTube or uh, consider blogging platforms. Do we need to be skilled? Do we need to be paid to publish on those? Of course not. 
The problem is that basically the number of persons who get paid by those platforms, as already has been said, is uh, shrinking, is diminishing. And uh, again, also uh, this kind of digital labor is uh, a low-skilled and low-intensity labor. Even lower in intensity and lower in skills is the labor that is distributed on very general, uh, uh, generalistic or mainstream uh, uh, platforms like, uh, uh, of course, uh, Facebook or any other social media. In this case, what is monetized? Not even the content we produce, but just the clicks, just the uh, engagement, just the fact of being online is something that can be monetized. So, in this context, we are actually looking at uh, uh, um, an activity that produces value, but that produces value uh, just by sheer sociability, by being there and engaging with others. And this is one of the aspects of present-day implicit digital labor. In some cases, we don't even need to be sociable to produce value. Just look at what happens with, uh, uh, well, search engines. The fact that it, every query you type in basically provides data to the search engine, trains the algorithm, and something even better that happens with reCAPTCHA. I mean, a device that everybody is familiar, I'm, I'm, I think, uh, I'm familiar with is basically if you want to retrieve a password or you want to leave a comment, you have to show the website that you're not a robot. This is actually the excuse. What you're actually doing is you're helping Google Books to recognize, uh, so to, to read some text, so you're helping and training their image and text recognition algorithms. And in a way, you are providing value to uh, the uh, corporation, and you are actually participating in the value production. Now, when it comes to value production, uh, also uh, something that has been raised for a, a number of speakers here is uh, the uh, topic of remuneration. How do we pay for this? And uh, there are a number of ways of envisaging this, but uh, the most important to me is also to say that around uh, working conditions and uh, around payment and around remuneration and the revenue of people who produce these contents or produce or provide or just give away those data, well, there is uh, now an ongoing number of conflicts, a number of conflicts that are around uh, uh, the kind of uh, activity that uh, we do on platform, we perform on platforms. Because despite the fact that my presentation so far has been focusing on unpaid uh, digital labor, actually digital labor sits in a continuum between uh, free tasks, things you just do, I don't know, you just click on things for free, and, uh, well, micro-paid labor. Uh, Mechanical Turk, again, has been mentioned before. Mechanical Turk is a, an interesting and quite scary, frankly, uh, platform. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it, it's an Amazon uh, marketplace for micro-work. Well, it's where micro-workers go to complete micro-tasks and get micro-paid. Just to give you a few examples, if you go there and, I don't know, you receive 100 songs and you have to organize these songs in playlists. Or you receive, I don't know, thousands of pictures to browse through, and you have to tag those pictures, or say if you can detect a human face in those pictures. The question, of course, for the most technophiles of you is, can we do it by a software? I mean, don't you have an algorithm to do that? Yes, of course. And the fact is that artificial intelligence has perform quite poorly when it comes to those specific tasks. There are some tasks that are better if they are performed by uh, human intelligence. And this is a, these are the kind of tasks that are performed on uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk. The very metaphor of the Mechanical Turk, well, some of you know, it was a 17th, uh, sorry, 18th century uh, automaton, a robot of the 18th century that was supposed to play chess. And uh, actually behind that, this so-called robot that was a, a human operator, uh, a dwarf, who was actually moving the, uh, the pieces 
on the exchequer. Uh, and the same metaphor is being used in the Amazon Mechanical Turk, because one of the aspects of present day digital labor is that despite the fact that we are always insisting on uh, automatization, there is also a lot of disautomatization, so that, uh, which means uh, that a lot of the tasks cannot be performed by machines and has to be perform have to be performed uh, by humans. And this is where labor comes in. This also comes in, if we look again at the corporate manifestation of uh, uh, collaborative economy, whenever uh, you are using a collaborative platform, and this platform is uh, somehow uh, reliant on, a, on an app. Uh, again, uh, every libertarian to an extent is a, a digital proletarian as far as he or she has to use and to download apps and some of the things that you have to do when you are a Uber driver has a lot to do with updating your profile, uh, cultivating your reputation online, like you would do in any of the other platforms uh, that are, have been discussing before. And this is something that, again, it is interesting and it shows us that most of the tasks that we perform when we are, uh, where, when we are digital laborers are undistinguishable uh, from sheer sociability or sheer engagement online or just, you know, being there and clicking on things. Um, there is a part of generosity, there is a part of, uh, uh, well, pleasure in uh, clicking on things and being a digital laborer, but there is also uh, an important part of value capture by corporate entities. Uh, and this is a, a part that is, well, it, it is a concern to an extent as far as we have to ask, our, we have to ask ourselves, uh, do uh, uh, these corporate entities uh, uh, produce value or do they, do they just capture the value that others produce? And do they capture it, uh, for instance, via proprietary algorithms, uh, via uh, intellectual laws, or uh, just other, uh, you know, proprietary tools? Uh, and in a way, they are capturing the free labors, the free labor, sorry, of uh, their members and users. So, what happens in this context? And this is the part where we come to the conflict part: uh, is that uh, users are not passive. Users consider uh, to an extent that this is uh, not what they should be uh, living. And uh, a number of, uh, 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 a number of uh, uh, groups of uh, uh, users of digital platforms are now organizing. Um, uh, Shelby Clark has presented a very interesting uh, uh, initiative with, uh, with Peer. Uh, other unions are coming up, but also some informal unions of uh, advocacy group or uh, some kind of semi-consumer groups are emerging everywhere. Think about the number of class actions uh, that does, do not only concern uh, formal or semi-formal workers, but uh, for instance, that uh, are related to data ownership. Uh, usually this class, those class actions uh, uh, target uh, big platforms uh, like Facebook, like Google, like Dropbox. Who owns my data? Uh, how can I have my data back and have my contribution recognized as a valuable contribution, so as a part of my labor? And in other cases, uh, there is an emergent milieu of network unionism. Uh, so these informal organizations get in touch with more formalized and more networked uh, unions, and some of those uh, unions are more traditional ones. Uh, and in some cases, there are very interesting alliances between old time and new time uh, uh, organization or organized labor. For instance, when last year um, app-based drivers, especially Uber drivers, decided to join forces with Teamsters in uh, Los Angeles. Yes, Teamsters is just the regular uh, eight, sorry, 20th century union of transportation workers. Again, there is an alliance that is going on there, and there is an alliance between plat digital platform laborers 
implicit in some cases, uh, not formally recognized, and more recognized ones. And uh, uh, again, this is uh, uh, extremely interesting. A number of unions in Europe in particular have been uh, uh, paying attention to this. Think about Germany. Last year, the DGB, which is the uh, Federation of uh, German Unions, decided to uh, take a stand against cheap digital labor. And uh, uh, yesterday, the IG Metall, which is another German union, decided to launch uh, 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 a platform to protect the rights of crowdsourced digital labor. Uh, uh, and uh, just to finish up and sum up what I just said, uh, the transition to the digital economy is in many cases, in many cases, been presented as a, a very linear one. Uh, my point here has been to show you that uh, it is not linear at all, it is characterized by conflicts, and as far as we do not recognize that these conflicts are related to labor, uh, we are sitting on a ticking time bomb of social conflictuality. Thank you very much.